Uh, I'll put an EMCF up either today or tomorrow, but shortly, which has 20 questions and is comprehensive, covering 3-4, 3-5, 3-7, and all four. Uh, do any of you ever look on courseware into the text? Some people do that. A lot of people don't. But the text is there. Uh, we take problems out of the exercise sets. For some reason, the answers to sections 4.4 and 4.5 are not there. So I'll post the answers on my website. And I'll also notify CASA to, to put them in where they belong. And I'll also post 4.6 because a line was left off. So I'll put answers for four, five, four, 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 five, four, six on my website. Okay, I think that's it. Uh, let's see. So uh, I guess you have been perhaps struggling with, well, cross transform for piecewise functions Oops, we got to open up the thing there. And so, more examples. And today we'll solve that, that initial value problem. So let's see, I want to go to where we left off on Monday. So we did that one. There is f of s, and I want to find f of s. The e to the minus 3s tells me that this is a piecewise function with the jump at 3. All right, that's what that signals. OK. And of course, uh, what, you'll be, what you use in these sections 4, 4, and 5, 4, 5, is this theorem. When you have a piecewise function and you express it in terms of a unit step function, you also have to translate the function itself. You can't take the Laplace transform of f of x, right? Let me write it here. Laplace transform. Well, I'm just going to write it here. Sorry. You've got f of x times u of x minus 2. And you want to take the Laplace transform. And everybody should say, let me write it so it's clear here, can't do it. You have to express this f of x in terms of x minus c. And that's easy to do. Wherever you have an x, you put x minus c plus c. And then follow your nose. You know, if you have to square it, you square it. But you keep the x minus c as a term. Uh, where people sometimes get screwed up is when you have sines and cosines. Then you have to use the addition formulas. And of course, we'll have for sines and cosines, typically we'll have the jumps at uh, pi over 2 or pi, something like that. Okay, I want to throw in an example where the jump is at pi over 4, because that would really make it. Might be. Well, I guess not this time. Okay, so where did we stop last time? Here, we did that example, so now we'll do this example. The e to the minus pi s tells me this is a, a piecewise function with the jump at pi. Now the first thing I'm gonna do is bust this up into one over s times s squared plus four minus 
e to the minus pi s. <coughs> 1 over s times s squared plus 4. This is so secret. Now, of course, this term here would be the first line in my uh, piecewise function. And then the, the, the combination of the two terms is my second line. And I may be able to combine some things in the second line, but I won't know until I get done. So clearly, the first thing I need to do is to use partial fractions to split this up. So this is A over S, B S plus C over S squared plus 4. If I add the fractions on the right, you'll, you'll have the same denominator as on the left, so the numerators must be the same. So that says A times S squared plus 4 plus B S plus C times S has to be 1. If I put s equal to 0, we get 4a is 1, so a is 1 fourth. Now, there's nothing convenient to set s equal to, so you're on your own however you want to work this out. Some people just expand the whole thing out, equate the coefficients of s. Uh, I typically, as you know, will just say, well, look, let's, let's, let's get the S squared term here. On the left, it's A plus B. On the right, it's zero. I know A, so I, now I know B. B is minus one fourth. Now I've got to get C, and, uh, <clears throat> you know, uh, what am I going to do? I could say, well, all right, why don't we get the S term? Now, let's see. So there's no S term here. This is a BS squared plus CS. So the coefficient of S on the left is C. The coefficient on the right is 0. So C is 0. So this breaks up into F of S is one-fourth over S minus one-fourth minus one-fourth S over S squared plus four minus E to the minus pi S. What did I do it like that? E to the minus pi S. times, well, I've already done the partial fraction, 1 over s minus 1 fourth s over s squared plus 4. Apologize for the writing. This podium here is very shaky for some reason. Or I'm shaky, one or the other. s squared plus 4. I think it's the podium and not me. Okay, well, I guess we're basically ready to go. Um, we're going to do these terms separately. So I think I'll just write them. I'm, I'm going to write one more line because this is a different kind of term from that. So this is minus 1 fourth S over S squared plus 4 minus E to the minus pi S minus 1 fourth times 1 over s plus 1 fourth e to the minus pi s times s over s squared plus 4. I, I'm cleaning it up for you all. If I were if I were just working this problem out, I probably wouldn't have written that line. I would have just taken the Laplace transform from the line above. So f of x. Well, uh, inverse of Laplace transform 1 over s is 1. So this is 1 4 minus 1 4 cosine 2x minus 1 4 
times u of x minus pi. Remember that e to the minus pi s, e to the minus pi s produces, when you invert, the e to the minus pi s becomes u of x minus pi over 4 in the inversion. Right? These are connected. U of x minus pi means you're going to have the e to the minus pi s. E to the minus pi s means you have u of x minus pi. Plus 1, 4. This here is what? Cosine of 2 times x minus pi. S of s squared plus 4 is cosine 2x. But you have to translate the x to pi. U of x minus pi. Okay, so uh, I think my next page, I, I'm going to add a page here and write that out again neatly. So what we have is f of x, f of x is, and what did we say? I said 1, 4. Minus 1, 4, cosine 2x, minus 1, 4, u of x minus pi, plus, I think we had 1, 4, 1, 4, cosine of 2 times x minus pi. The x has to be translated to pi, but I invert u of x minus pi. Okay. Well, now I can write this as a piecewise function. I will, I will do one more step, but let me write it as a, just write this as a piecewise function, and then I'll compare with the answer I have on the next page, and then show you how I got that. So, uh, this is zero until you get to pi. This is zero until you get to pi. So all we have is 1 fourth minus 1 fourth cosine 2x, zero, less or equal to left, x, less or equal, less than pi. Now I'm at pi. What do I have? 1 fourth minus 1 fourth cosine 2x minus uh, 1 fourth plus 1 4 cosine of 2 times x minus pi. This is for x greater than or equal to pi. And let's, let's look at my answer. 1 4 minus 1 4 cosine 2x minus 1 4 u of x minus pi. That's that's this term right there. And then let's look at this term. It's 1 fourth cosine 2x u of x minus pi. So what? Well, okay. This is what I have right here. That's this. How did I get to that? Well, this is cosine of 2x minus 2 pi. Cosine of A minus B is cosine A, cosine B, cosine of 2 pi is 1. I'll write it out. So this is equal to, I'm going to write it underneath. Just, because I've been doing this in my head most times. Cosine 2x, cosine 2 pi, plus, I assume everybody knows the addition formulas, sine and cosine. Sine of A plus B, there's a plus sign between the two terms. Cosine of A plus B, there's a minus sign between the two terms. Cosine of A minus B, there's a plus sign between the two terms. And so you see this is just equal cosine 2x. Because cosine 2 pi is 1, sine 2 pi is 0. So that's how we got this. Okay, 
Now, for x between 0 and pi, this stuff is 0. When we get to pi, oh, so let me go to the, to where's my end page here? So this is 1 4 minus 1 4 cosine 2x, 0 less or equal to x, less than pi. Then I have 1 4 minus 1 4 cosine 2x, minus 1 4 plus 1 4 cosine 2x x greater than or equal to pi. Because the cosine of 2x minus 2 pi is cosine 2x. So this is 1 4 minus 1 4 cosine 2x, 0 less or equal to x less than pi, and 0 x bigger than or equal to pi. You have no way of knowing in the beginning that it was going to turn out this way. Okay. So there it is again neatly. So uh, by the way, I, I have other examples. I have more examples I'm going to do, but I want to make sure that I show you an initial value problem. And to be honest, we're not going to ask you to solve an initial value problem on the exam. It's no big deal, right? Really, solving an initial value problem, you just take the Laplace transform, you get an f of s. And then you have to invert it. So if you've done 4, 4, and 4, 5, doing an initial value problem is no big deal. You've already done everything you need to be able to do. Okay. <clears throat> Now, we will ask you to calculate the Laplace transform of an initial value problem. That's to make sure that you know that the Laplace transform of y double is s squared times y minus s y is 0 minus 1. So you're going to have to do that, but you're not going to have to solve the whole problem from beginning to end, like I'm going to do now. Okay. So let's look at I want to do this just to, just to show it to you, but at least as important, I want to show you what the graph of the solution looks like. Okay, so we've got this first order initial value problem. The forcing function is piecewise continuous. Okay, so it has a jump. All right, <clears throat> and these things have practical applications. So, Oh my God, there it is. So what's the big deal? <laughs> Let's show you a page. <coughs> so I can actually do it. Excuse me, so I can actually do it. So what do we have? We have uh, y prime, I think, plus 2y is uh, x and 1. <laughs> x, 0, less or equal to x, less than 3, 1 for x bigger than or equal to 3. That's my forcing function, piecewise. And y at 0 is 1. So I want to take the Laplace transform of this initial value problem. But of course, I can't do that until I uh, fix this up. So let's do that. Um, this here, f of x, in terms of the unit step function, is x minus x u of x minus 3 plus u of x minus 3. All right, I'm x until I get to 3, and then I have to drop the x and add a 1. Okay. This is x minus, and I'm going to take Laplace transform. I can't do that until I write this as x minus 3 plus 3, u of x minus 3, plus u of x minus 3. And then I clear the parenthesis, x minus, keeping the x minus 3 as a term. This will be a minus 3 u 
plus one u is minus two u of x minus three. Now I'm ready to take the Laplace transform of my initial value problem. So we get, so I'll take Laplace transform. Laplace transform of y prime is sy minus y at zero, which is one, plus two y is equal to, okay, Laplace transform of x, 1 over s squared minus e to the minus 3s Laplace transform. This was an x, remember? This is x translated to 3, but it's an Laplace transform of x that we write here. So that's that term, minus 2 e to the minus 3s. Laplace transform of 1 is 1 over s. Okay, there's a Laplace transform. <coughs> now we solve for what? Capital Y, the Laplace transform. <coughs> so capital Y is times S plus two equals one over S squared minus E to the minus pi minus three S minus three S times 1 over s squared minus 2 e to the minus 3s times 1 over s plus 1. Brought the 1 over to the right. So y is 1 over s squared times s plus 2 minus e to the minus 3s 1 over s squared times s plus 2 minus 2e to the minus 3s, 1 over s times s plus 2, plus 1 over s plus 2. Okay, now you, there's the, there is the Laplace transform of the solution. But we want the solution, not just its Laplace transform. So you see what I have to do. I've got to do some partial fraction stuff here. So let's do that. So what was the partial fraction? So we had 1 over s squared times s plus 2, which busts up into a over s, b over s squared, c over s plus 2. This says that a s times s plus 2 plus b times s plus 2 plus c s squared has to be 1. We do the obvious. I'm going to set s equal to 0. Add 0. Add 0. 2b is 1. b is 1 half. I'll set s equal to minus 2. So that's 0. That's 0. 4c is 1, c is 1 fourth. Okay, and now, you know, I've run out of numbers. So I resort to my usual thing. Uh, this is an as squared, there's a cs squared. So I look at the s squared term, a plus c is 0, a is minus 1 fourth. <coughs> Now I'm not done. You see why this, uh, doing the Laplace transform from beginning to end, even in the first order case, would take a fair amount of time. Even when you know what you're doing. <laughs> which, 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 I, I can do this one. Okay. So one over S times S plus two. So this is A over S, B over S plus 2. So A times S plus 2 plus B S has to be 1. S equals 0. A is 1 half. And B is minus 1 half. 
Okay. Now I'm going to write out Y in one long string. Capital Y is. So I have to go back, way back, or well, back to here. I've got this first term, which I know is. I should have written that out, shouldn't I have? Wait a second. I should have written out uh, what this becomes. Uh, what do we say? Minus 1 fourth over s plus 1 half over s squared plus 1 fourth over s plus 2. So, this first term here is minus 1 4 over s plus 1 half over s squared plus 1 4 over s plus 2. Now, what is the second term? Well, it's the same thing except times e to the minus 3s. All right. So I'm going to have minus 1, 1, 4, e to the minus 3s times 1 over s plus 1 half e to the minus 3s times 1 over s squared plus 1 fourth e to the minus 3s times, this is a 1 over s plus 2, e to the minus 2 times x minus 3. Now I've taken care of the first term and the second term. Now we have minus 2 and we have a 1 over s, uh, e to the minus 3s times 1 over s. I'll write it down. e to the minus 3s times 1 over s. I'm sorry, it's not a 1 over s. Where's, uh, it's uh, 1 half over s. So it's 1 half over s uh, <coughs> minus e to the minus 3s times 1 half over s plus 2. And that takes care of this term. And then I have plus 1 over s plus 2. Wow. So what does this give? Minus 1 4 over <coughs> s plus 1 half over s squared plus 5 fourths over s plus 2. Because of this 1 fourth and that 1. And that's my first row, isn't it? Because the other terms contain the e to the minus 3s. <coughs> it's my first row. So uh, if you'll utter a, a silent prayer, I'll go to my answer. How about that? Look at the first row. It's OK, right? All right. So let's see, I can, uh, I can multiply in the 2, so this gives me a minus e to the minus 3s times 1 over s plus e to the minus 3s times 1 over s plus 2, the minus 2 times the half, the minus 2 times the minus a half. And I've taken care of that term. So I think I'm ready to write down the y, right? y of x is 1 fourth plus 1 half x plus 5 fourths e to the minus 2x minus u of x minus 3, the 1 over s, right? The e to the minus 3s is u of x minus 3. 1 over s is 1, plus e to the minus 2 times x minus 3, u of x minus 3. 
So what is my last row? I'll have one fourth minus one, that would be a minus three fourths. Then plus a half x, then plus this five fourths, whoops, yeah, then plus this exponential time. So all I have to do is write out what I've written at the bottom in piecewise form. And there it is. One, one half? Why the hell did I get one half? Ooh. Ooh. I think, I think I should have minus three fourths is something, let's see, five fourths, five fourths is okay, right there, of course. Three fourths, well, I should have, I worked this out some time ago, and I don't, the first row we know is okay. The second row, I have something different. Let me, let me write down what I have, and then you all can work it out. <laughs> Minus three fourths plus five fourths e to the minus two x. And I have, oops, sorry. Then I have, let me go back. What do I have? I have this term, e to the minus, I have plus e to the minus two times x minus three. So somehow I have those coefficients wrong. Okay, so this is what I got this time. Perhaps this is a good illustration of why we're not gonna put this on the exam. All right, it's, it's, it's tough. Okay, uh, I mean, that, that could be the, that could be the free response part. Just that all by itself. It just takes a long time. There's a lot of calculations to do. You see, when, you, when you're solving an initial value problem with a piecewise continuous forcing function, all right, you're going to have to do all that getting the piecewise function set up to take the Laplace transform. You're always going to wind up with something to partial fraction. You're going to have to partial fraction. Then you got to go back. Uh, perhaps I should be glad because it's not as, you know, that, that I got a different answer. Uh, because it, 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 there's nothing profound here, but there's a lot of calculations. A lot of things to keep straight. What I wanted to illustrate, uh, and what I have graphed, okay, so apparently one time I did this and I got this, now I've done it another time and got something else. The first row was okay. We know that. Okay. So uh, I graphed. I graphed this because I want to show you something. The graph looks like that. And what I will call your attention to here is three. And notice the graph is continuous at three, but not differentiable. That's because my uh, piecewise function was not continuous at three. It had a jump. So my solution, my solution is continuous, but it is not differential. The y prime in that equation has a jump. So the, deriv the derivative doesn't exist. And this is typically what happens with uh, when your forcing function is a piecewise function with jumps. Your solutions will be continuous, but will have discontinuous derivatives, typically, at the jumps. If I had fixed up, if I had fixed up my forcing function, all right, instead of having a, uh, this is x from zero to three, so it looks like that, and then it's a one. If I had made my forcing function look like this, right, 
then it would have been differential at three. But because the force of the function was not continuous at three, the solution was not differential at three. <coughs> well, uh, you engineers, especially um, like civil engineers, who want to design roads and railroads, you know, you, you don't want a railroad track to have any kind of sudden sharp turns, right? Uh, you have to be very careful how you uh, take, you know, transition from straight track to curved track. You have to be very careful about things like that. And that's where this kind of um, application comes into play. Okay, so uh, I did a second order problem. Whoa. Now I'm not gonna do it, okay? Uh, I mean, it, it really, it, it, let me take the rest of the period. How much time do we got? Yeah, okay, plenty of time. I'm not going to do it anyway. Uh, I mean, it, it really is an expanded piece of work. But I, I took this function, I took this initial value problem, here was my f, so I had a jump at 2, okay? And I went ahead and did it. Uh, who knows whether I did it correctly or not, but I. Well, I think I got this part right for sure. And then I inverted it, and this is what I got. Okay? And of course, I'm not too confident about that. But I think it might be right. Okay. And what does the graph look like? Well, there is the graph, and it had this function, this function here, the solution, is it has a. Uh, well, in fact, it has a continuous first and second derivative. I'm sorry, it has, it's continuous and it's differentiable. But the second derivative is not continuous at two. But the function and the first derivative are continuous. These two curves meet here in a differentiable manner. A simple example of what I'm talking about you know, if you have y equal x squared and y equals zero, these two curves, this is a continuous curve. It's differentiable. The derivative of x squared at zero is zero. The derivative of zero is zero. So it's differentiable, but not twice differentiable. The second derivative of x squared is two. And the second derivative of zero is zero. So the second derivative is zero and then it's two. So it's continuous, it's differentiable, but not twice. And that's the situation with this function. Okay, well that's the end. But I don't, of course I don't wanna, oh! Should we do, it? should I do a couple more? Uh, well, I'm gonna do a couple more examples. Then we'll have a popper, because now you're all prepared. Okay, now you're ready to go. So I'm gonna see. I'm gonna I'm gonna do a couple more examples, then I'll give you the pop. This would be popper number eight. So I just want to do a couple more examples which I made up myself. Uh, well, made up myself, what's the big deal? So there you go. Uh, it's a little more experience with uh, sine and cosine. Piecewise function with a sine and cosine. Okay, so there's my function. Want to find its Laplace transform. Step one, express this in terms of u. In this case, u of x minus pi over 2. <coughs> By the way, I, <coughs> I haven't worked this problem. I just wrote it down. So I don't, I don't have any idea how it's going to turn out. OK, but I know what to do. The important thing is I know what to do. And then all I have to do is be careful 
to do it correctly. So, you know, not make a dumb mistake. So, the purpose of all the uh, sample questions, you know, sample exam questions, the practice exam, and so on, is just give you a lot of practice so that you ought to be confident if you see a problem, you at least know how to do it. Then be careful in doing it, because uh, there'll be some, a lot of these will be multiple choice questions. Okay, so sine x minus sine x u of x minus pi over 2 plus 1 plus 2 cosine x u of x minus pi over 2. Now, some of you now know, have enough experience to know that this sine is going to become a cosine. And this cosine over here is going to become a sine. Why is that? You know, because the, the sine of x minus pi over 2 is the cosine of x. We're going to switch from sine to cosine. Let's look at that. <clears throat> so this is sine x minus the sine of x minus pi over 2 plus pi over 2. Can I just write u? Save a little space. Okay. Plus u, that's 1 times the u, plus 2 cosine of x minus pi over 2 plus pi over 2 times u. All right. Now we do the calculation, sine x minus. So this, this is the sine of a plus b. So it's the sine of a, cosine of b. Cosine of pi over 2 is 0. Plus the cosine of a times the sine of b, the sine of pi over 2 is 1. So this is minus cosine x minus pi over 2 times u plus u. I really mean x minus pi over 2. <clears throat> plus 2. This is the cosine of a plus b. So it's cosine a, cosine of pi over 2 is 0, minus sine a, sine of pi over 2, which is 1. So this is minus 2. minus 2 sine of x minus pi over 2 times u. I'll make a little note here. u is u of x minus pi over 2, in case you want to reproduce this. OK. So now, uh, we're ready to take the last one. L of f is plus transform sine x, 1 over s squared plus 1, minus, minus e to the minus pi over 2s. I might as well write that down right away, right? The u is e to the minus pi over 2s, times the Laplace transform of cosine x. See, this is x translated to pi over 2. So that's s over s squared plus 1, plus e to the minus pi over 2s. The plus transform of 1 is 1 over s, minus 2 <coughs> e to the minus pi over 2s. This is the sine of x. That's an x translated to 2 is 1 over s squared plus 1. So there's my Laplace transform. OK. In 
another example? Well, suppose you had two jumps, three pieces. <coughs> so we first thing we do, we write this in terms of unit step functions, x minus x u x minus 1 plus x squared u of x minus 1 minus x squared u of x minus 2 plus 2 u of x minus 2. I look at this, I start out at 1, and I am x until I get to 1. Then I have to get rid of the x, add the x squared. I continue moving to the right. I am x squared until I get to 2. So I have to get rid of the x squared and become 2 after 2. So there we have it in terms of you. Now I have to write my coefficients in terms of x minus c. You know, as I say, I just wrote these down. I, I didn't think about how fat they are or will be. Uh, so I'm going to perhaps write these down vertically. Um, maybe I'll do that. Uh, so we have x. We have this term, so it's minus x minus 1 plus 1 times <coughs> u of x minus 1, which is minus x minus 1 u of x minus 1 minus u of x minus 1. So that's just that second term. So now we have plus x minus 1 plus 1 squared u of x minus 1. That's this term, which is x minus 1 squared times u plus 2 times x minus 1 times u plus 1 times u. That's this term. Then I have minus, and I'm writing down the third term. So that's x minus 2 plus 2 squared u of x minus 2, which is x minus 2 squared u. I've got to remember that minus sign. I better, I better keep it with me. Minus x minus 2 squared times u plus 4 of oh, two with minus 4 this is u minus 4 x minus 2 u plus 4 u that's that term and then plus 2 u of x minus 2 that is minus 4 u yes it is thank you very much Okay, so what does this all become? Um, notice that I have a minus x minus 1 and a plus 2 x minus 1. So that becomes a plus 1 x minus 1. So I'll try to write this out. This is, uh, as I say, I just wrote this down and did one without thinking. And, uh, well, I might as well grab this term first. Plus x minus 1 squared times u. So I got that term. This term and this term combine to give me a plus x minus 1 u. So I've taken care of that term and that term. I have a minus u and I have a plus u. So they add up. 
Now I'm just down to here, so it looks like minus x minus 2 squared minus 4 times x minus, oop, I forgot the mu. And I know that you're thinking, you better make that u sub 1. And then minus x minus 2 squared u2 minus 4 x minus 2 u2 minus 4 u2. Why is Why u2? So this term right here is this term, this term is this term, and this term is that term. But then you forgot the, the final line. Oh, and the last line. Yeah, plus two. Oh, yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah, this line here. I didn't see. So this becomes a minus two. You would agree. It should be a minus two because we have a minus four and a plus two. So now I'm ready. 1 over s squared plus e to the minus s times 1 over s squared <coughs> plus, uh, this is an x, so e to the minus s, x squared, 2 over s cubed. That's an x, 1 over s squared minus e to the minus 2s, 2 over s cubed, that's an x squared, minus 4, e to the minus 2s, 1 over s squared, that's an x, minus 2, e to the minus 2s, 1 over s. You're not going to have a three-piece function. Yes, sir. No, a 2. E to the minus 2s. E to the minus 2s. Okay? Oh, uh, no, that's a, this is, this here is an s. Oh, I'm sorry, that's a, a 2 over s cubed. See, this is x squared, so it's 2 over s cubed. I think that's okay. We're not going to give you a three-step function, but you ought to see how to do it. Okay, now we invert. What's f of x? Oh, by, by the way, you know, inverting is easier than, than uh, the other way, right? Unless you have partial fractions to do on top of it. Uh, this one we don't. So inverting is, is typically a little, a little easier. You have a little interpretation to do. But f of x, you will agree, is 4, right? 4 over x. Plus, let's see, that's a, a 3x, right? 1 over x squared is x. Minus 2. Now here's where you have to think, where you have to be careful. 1 over s squared is x, but you have to translate it to 3. 2 times x minus 3, u of x minus 3, plus 1 over s plus 2 is e to the minus 2x translated to 3, u of x minus 3. Now, this would be a multiple choice question. But you can't stop here. Your answers will be in piecewise form. So this is 4 plus 3x. The x, the u of x minus 3 terms are on the second row. They're not on the first row. This is for 0 less or equal to x less than 3. Then it's 4 plus 3x minus 2 times x minus 3. Why this? Because when you're bigger than 3, that's a 1. 
So you have minus 2 times x minus 7. Plus, this is a 1, so we have plus e to the minus 2 times x minus 3, x bigger than or equal to 3. Now, often there is some, this is a multiple choice question. When you do this, often there is some, uh, you know, combining that you can do on this last row. This is what? This is a plus 6, plus 4 is 10. 3x minus 2x is x plus, oh, I forgot the first row, sorry, 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 I forgot the first row, 4 plus 3x, 0 less or equal to x, less than 3, 4 plus 6 is 10, 3x minus 2x is x, and this is plus e to the minus 2 times x minus 3, x bigger than or equal to 3. Okay. So there's a couple of examples for you. And let's see, can we do this one quickly and then we'll do the popper? This is 3 times s over s squared plus 9 plus e to the minus pi s times s over s squared plus 9 minus <coughs> 2 thirds e to the minus pi s times 3 over s squared plus 9. This is a minus 2 over s squared plus 9, but of course we need a 3 in the numerator. So this is equal to 3 cosine 3x plus <coughs> cosine 3x u of x minus pi minus 2 thirds <coughs> sine 3 ooh, wow, what I tell you I, I would lose 10 points right on that spot x minus pi u of x minus pi Sine of 3 times x minus pi, u of x minus pi. And then, of course, you'd expand that uh, 3x minus 3 pi and the cosine of 3x minus 3 pi. Uh, I'll just take a second. 3 cosine 3x plus cosine 3x minus 3 pi is going to be a uh, minus cosine 3x, I believe. Minus, you know, plus cosine 3x. Cosine of 3 pi is minus 1. Times the minus, times the plus 1, sorry. Plus 1 is a minus. Uh, u of x minus pi, and then sine 3x minus 3 pi is sine 3x, sine 3 pi, so this will be plus 2 thirds sine 3x u of x minus pi. So I just did the addition formula quickly in my head, that will have our hopper. Okay. which I'm going to give you, you know, a reasonable amount of time on. And then Monday we start on chapter 5. Now where? See. I'll post that thing on my website. Let's see. Uh, where are you? Okay, get out your form. This is copper number eight. There it is. There's only two questions. So what you want to do is write down the problem, and then, of course, I have my table. 
So you write down the problem, and then I'll, I'll put up the table. Maybe you don't even get, get, does anybody need the table? I mean, just taking the Laplace transform of X and 2. I, I don't think I don't think you need to I'll tell you what Laplace transform of X is. Okay. Is 1 over S squared. Laplace transform of 1 is 1 over S. You don't need the table for this problem. So just take the Laplace transform of that piecewise function. You notice that uh, all of them start out with 3 over x squared. same second term. And the only question is, what's the third term? Oh, by the way, E is none of the above. Everybody done? You do realize that in Costa, the program, if they find two identical sheets, they throw them out because they figure they collaborate. Mm -hmm. So you get a zero. Hmm? What's the chances that if I take the stack of your paper, that I'll find at least two with exactly the same choice? In other words, is it possible that two different people would, would choose exactly the same letter? Would that, is that possible? Yeah. Probably there was one. Well, the point is if you're sitting next to somebody, make sure your answers are different from their neighbor. <laughs> Your logic is not sound, sir. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Wow. <laughs> okay, everybody done? I'll tell you what, I'll put up the number. There's only two. I'll put up the second one, and uh, you know you can uh, you can work on them both at the same time. This one I had to write out because it was too fat to uh, put on the thing. This one might be well, clearly four x is the first line, so you can write that down. 
and then you can take your time to work on both. Yeah. Is that, is that four by squared minus two? E Which where? In the problem. Oh yeah, minus two. Four over s squared minus two e to the minus three s one over s squared plus two e to the minus three s one over s minus two. I'll write it down. Yeah. Four over s squared minus two e to the minus three s. 1 over s <coughs> plus 2 e to the minus 3s times 1 over s minus Should I go back? Should I show the first one again? Should you pick your answer? Or leave it? I have no idea what I'm doing. Just need to be a dog with glasses. If you're happy with your answers, you can pack up and go. As long as you don't discover anybody else in the process. 